only about the test. You study for the test, right? Taiwan, Japan, and South Korea, for, for example, these countries, the education system really traumatizes kids when it comes to learning English because it's not about using language for fun. It's not about using language to communicate. It's only about the test. You study for the test, right? And you don't even have to know how to use English, but you have to know what's on the test, right? There are certain things uh, in order to get certain uh, visas, you have to have a, a, a English speaking score in order to get into university. And so the focus on learning English for the test really messes people up. And this is the case in East Asia. It's a very big problem. And what it does is it kills your confidence because your orientation to English is all on, on paper with high, high levels of stress, trying to read and memorize what's on the paper, not so that you can talk and, and live and be human and interact and have fun, not that. It's so that you can get the stupid test right, get the high test score. And you know, this is not how the brain is set up. This is not how communication works. So when you're learning English in school, there's a lot of, there's way too much pressure. Uh, take for example, people who live in Europe. Uh, let's take Holland or Germany, for example. In these countries, they don't speak English as their native language. You know, in, in Holland, they speak Dutch, but they learn English in, in school from a very young age, just like you do. But the interesting thing is that when Dutch people grow up, they're fairly fluent. Same thing with uh, you know Danish people. Many German people are fluent. Uh, many Europeans in general are fairly fluent in English. They speak it quite naturally, and they studied it just as long as you guys. So my question is, what's the difference? I mean, what's the difference between the European way of learning English in school and the way that it's taught in East Asia? You know, so that you can get that test score. Well, I think that. First of all, a lot of younger people are speaking English better these days because of the internet. For example, a lot of younger people uh, play games online in English, or they search for stuff that they're interested in in English. And this is definitely true with Europe, and it's been true in Europe for a long time, that people you know, will search, they'll read books in English because they're curious and interested. So a big cultural difference has to do with uh, this idea of following your interests because it's fun, right? Anyway, it's just an interesting thing to think about. And when you think about that, it, it's good to have a little bit of doubt, a little seed of doubt that, you know, maybe your school education was wrong. You know, maybe English is not all about stressing out and, and suffering. And, you know, you have to work harder, memorize more, maybe, maybe not, you know, give yourself a break. What if you already did enough work and now all you need to do is practice talking, practice looking at people in the eye, talking back and forth, listening, and just in a very human way, person to person, communicating like this, this will shake everything loose. The words that you know will start to bubble up to the surface. The grammar that you know will start to become just available. It, it's wild how this works. I teach, you know, they're working with individuals one on one. If you if you get someone to practice speaking and pronouncing a phrase, you know, there's grammar rules, there's pronunciation rules. When you get them to pr practice this thing over and over while feeling the meaning of the word, while connecting with you, not reading it off paper, not writing it onto paper, writing it on the test. I mean, human to human, like tell me something and then they tell you something and then you go back and forth. When you get people to practice this way, it starts to shake loose all that they've been studying for all these years. All the grammar you studied, it's not useless. It's all right there. It's completely useful. And it's amazing that you can study just only, like, let's say one sentence and it will generalize to many other sentences. You know, one grammar rule applies to thousands of sentences. One pronunciation trick applies to thousands and thousands of pronunciation cases. So if you learn a couple things really well, you can apply them to, you know, 10,000 other things. And then suddenly your language levels up, your stress goes down, and then confidence is just the natural result. The natural result of lower stress is confidence, calm, chill, having a good time. And you're just talking because it's interesting. And when you get into this mode, all of your English will become available to you to use.